Welcome to this episode of Through Their Eyes. In spirit of the upcoming holiday season, today we'll be talking about Thanksgiving and family dynamics surrounding it. Um, today, Anvi will not be joining us, unfortunately, but we do have a very special guest named Dia, who I'm highly recommended by Anvi. Uh, Dia, would you like to introduce yourself? Um, hi, thank you for inviting me. I'm Dia, and I'm a sophomore in Panther Creek High School. Well, let's get started. Today, we're going to kick off this episode by talking about our own personal family traditions that we have for Thanksgiving and just niche things that we do in our small little communities in our households. Um, do you want to start? Do you have any specific traditions or anything like that that you do in your house for Thanksgiving? Um, not really. We don't really do that big feast that some families do because my entire family is vegetarian, so we don't do the turkey, obviously. Um, I think I've had pie like once in my life. And um, if we do do a big meal, usually it will be like an Indian meal. Um, and yeah, it's not anything that's completely set. It just depends on the year. Sometimes we'll go somewhere. Sometimes we'll just bring everyone to our house. Usually we just use it as an excuse to like, it's a three-day weekend. Nice. We'll use it for something. Yeah. Um, I have some extended fam- I have some extended family that's also vegetarian. Um, what is it? I was vegetarian for like two years. And I remember for Thanksgiving, I don't even remember what I did for those like years that I was vegetarian actually for Thanksgiving, but my extended family, they're all vegetarian. And I remember for Thanksgiving, instead of like a mock turkey or anything like that, they would make vegetarian beef wellington. Which is like really interesting, but it was actually really good. Like instead of beef, they use mushroom. I mean, like it is kind of like already packed in mushroom, but they have mushroom inside of it. It's like this whole thing, but it actually tasted really, really good. And they do all the classic sides, like mashed potatoes and mac and cheese, and then like the just classic desserts like sweet potato pie, pumpkin pie, and then they also do pumpkin rolls, which are honestly like my favorite part. But um, yeah, in terms of like my family, I think. We have started recently. Well, not recently, actually. That's a lie. We're like last decade. I don't know why I said recently doing like the traditional Thanksgiving dinner. That's only because I was the one who prompted it. My family is Hispanic and they come from Central America. So they don't celebrate. They used to not celebrate Thanksgiving like that just because it isn't really like a thing down there. Honestly, it's of course just concentrated in the U.S. But um. Yeah, like I think it was my idea when I was like nine years old because for some reason I just wanted like that classic Thanksgiving vibe. I took it upon myself mm-hmm. to teach myself how to cook. So I made my family a little traditional Thanksgiving dinner. And I've been I've been cooking for Thanksgiving ever since. Like usually I'm a chef for the day. But um that's really interesting that you guys don't celebrate it in like a traditional, like sort of I guess like American way. Um, what do you guys usually make though? I know you said traditional dishes, but what specifically? Um, honestly, we don't really do like something specific. We don't have a tradition because in India, um, all of our main holidays, like the Bali and New Year, that's all around the same time. So, and then there's also Christmas, which we celebrate because, you know, presents, that's fun. We don't really do the whole religious part, but like it's Christmas. Who doesn't like Christmas? Um, but I forgot where I was going with that. Um, so for like that whole time period, we we already have all of our major holidays. So Thanksgiving immediately is like, it doesn't really matter as much. We don't have full traditions. We just kind of use it for whatever we want to. A lot, a lot of years we're like, actually, we're really busy. What if we hold a Navratri party or the Vali party on Thanksgiving? Because, you know, we won't have time anywhere else. Yeah. That's really interesting. I think the cultural relativity aspect surrounding Thanksgiving is really interesting because I think like when you grow up like in the U.S., like at least for, for me, I'm just so used to having like a thinking of like that specific day as just kind of like a like turkey day. You know what I'm saying? So like I think it's just kind of like seeing how like what is it people who come from different parts of the world or just like people who have grown up in different cultures, but like still in the U.S., like what is it like celebrate like their like holidays or just like do things differently in general it's just it's really interesting to see because I think it's one of those things where it's like people sometimes may not take notice of that just because they're so used to kind of being fed this one specific 
like image or like um yeah for that particular like day or that time of the year so I think that's really interesting to take into account Mm -hmm. I forget how vast the world is and how much there is I think especially with like Americans specifically like we stay very fixated on the on like the U.S. in specific we stay very fixated on our country I don't know why that is and I've noticed that even when people from the U.S. like travel to other parts of the world like they don't like they have a hard time conceptualizing that people live differently and I don't know why that is like do you know what I mean like sometimes like tourists from here will like go to the parts of the other parts of the world and they'll be kind of like I don't explain it's like a very specific it's a mindset that's very specific to the U.S. and I don't know like do you know what I'm like getting at or yeah I I get what you mean because like in India I see this a lot with Japan and India um, because our mannerisms and just like the way we talk to other people is so different And when immigrants like my mom come into America, they have to learn all of this. So they understand like what they, what Americans do and what other people do and how that's different. But a lot of people in America stay there. So when they travel, most of the time, they only really understand fully American mannerisms. So it's just like a completely different world. Yeah, no, I agree. I think a really big issue with like people from the US is just that they're very used to people having to acclimate to their culture as opposed to the other way around. And I think that's usually where the issue stems from. And I think it's also largely just the amount of like media focus that is on the US in general. Like I've noticed that because I think one thing that I heard like a really long time ago was that um like if you make it big in the US like in terms of the music industry then you can make it big internationally and i thought that was really interesting to see just the amount of like fixation there is on the US and the media and just the general customs of the US just seeing how much light is shed on it specifically like that mm-hmm. just small like region of the world is just it's it's really interesting to see honestly and i've always wondered what it is that like was it hyperfixates that like what is it has us hyperfixating on the US and there are like parts of the world that are like so much bigger. Do you know what I mean? Like I've always wondered. Yeah. Even as someone living in America, I had never had like a turkey dinner or anything. But since I was like very little in elementary school, we had like the little turkey hand drawings, the like activities, the little potlucks. Like I knew what an American Thanksgiving dinner would look like without ever having done one or like eaten one because that's just what we learn that's what we celebrate in schools and nowadays a lot of time like they'll shed more light on other things like Diwali and Hanukkah and other things but when you're in elementary school or if you went in school like a long time ago then it's probably just going to be like what Americans do and that's just what everybody grows up on. Yeah, no, that is really true. I really like that we're moving in a direction where we are shedding light on different customs of people that come from different parts of the world, just because um, I feel like with America, like we are, you know, like a melting pot, like they call it. And I think it's it's good to, what is it, um, express just the different traditions that are like existing across the globe, especially for like children specifically. I think it's really important for kids to feel represented and the things that they do instead of feeling excluded. But I think it's really good that we're moving in that direction. Yeah. I think it's like really nice to see a lot of like other things that I actually celebrate because in school when we did things like Thanksgiving focused I would always be like why is there a turkey I don't eat turkey my mom doesn't eat turkey what am I supposed to do with this oh yeah and- no. mm-hmm. yeah no I'm trying to think of uh what else that like my family specifically does like during like Thanksgiving I actually texted my cousin earlier today and I was like hey do you want to come down but she can't unfortunately but um what is it one thing that I was going to bring up, though, is just, like, the amount of, like, effort it takes just to, what is it, like, make, like, a Thanksgiving dinner happen and just kind of, like, uh, how much planning goes around. I've always thought that was really interesting as well because one of those things where it's, like, we hyper fixate on it and then it's just so much planning, like, on one day. It is, like, I feel like it is nice because you do get to see your family, but then, like, when you're the one cooking, like, me, like, it's, like, exhausting. Mm-hmm. 
and I always thought that was really funny because especially with turkeys like having to brine them is just so like tiring and I don't know but um one thing I do like about Thanksgiving though is just kind of like the theme of bringing people together I have always liked that and I think that's really cute especially me because I'm very family oriented I just I like spending time around my family I know for you even if it isn't like a traditional like Thanksgiving sort of archetype I'm sure you feel the same way where it's it's just nice to be around your family and be around your loved ones I think it's I think it's nice to kind of have that and even beyond like Thanksgiving I think holidays in general are great for that but um what is it yeah I think it's just nice to have that sense of community um I think one thing that I find really interesting is just um I was going to relate this back to like this one thing I read a while ago how like people say that like college is like the best years of your life and I remember reading something about the fact that like the reason why so many people feel that way is because of that sense of community like you live in a very you live in very close proximity to one people your age and then also just people in general and then a lot of times like you'll need like help from your peers like let's say like for me example like I live in an apartment like sometimes if I need something I'll just like text in our group chat like our building group chat I'll just be like hey does anyone have like xyz and it's just kind of like it's like that sense of like familiarity. I think that people really like love and enjoy. And I think that's something that's very special and not unique to the holidays per se, but it's something that makes them so easy to cherish. Just having that like valuable time with like your loved ones and the people close to you. Yeah. Humans are very sociable people. And like, I think just being able, like any excuse that we have to just get as many people as possible to hang out we'll take um and I think like you bringing up the cooking that's really interesting because when I grew up watching like movies that pertain to like a Thanksgiving dinner or any dinner party at all um the dinner would be like completely ready by the time all the guests walked in and in my community that's just like not something that we do and usually when I go to dinner parties the dinner's not done yet we all like kind of help out. We do some of the dishes. We make some of the sides. And I feel like that's what Thanksgiving is about. Just like community and bringing people together, whether or not it's during a meal or through the meal. I think that's really interesting that you bring up that like when you go to dinner parties, like normally like you guys will help out instead of just having it all prepared. For me, like in my mind, I'm kind of relating that to kind of like the individualistic versus like community like uh cultures like for me like since like we're hispanic we come from like a collectivist culture as opposed to like an individualistic one so like it's it's similar for me even though we have thanksgiving like normally like my family will help me cook well not like help they'll like help me prepare things like they'll like cut a vegetables they'll help me like what is it um like season everything and then i'll be the one like kind of leading the recipes but um Yeah, like I've noticed that too, like in movies, everything is always expected to just be finished and done as soon as the guests start arriving. And I think it's, it's interesting because it's normally expected, the responsibility falls on one person or just a handful of people to get everything done, whereas opposed to collectivist culture, like you and I's cultures, I feel like typically like at dinner parties, people help out and they make sure that everything is like prepared and it's, it's a group effort and also kind of like a group reward as well afterwards, whereas opposed to I feel like more like American style dinners. I know like I have an American style like dinner, but you know what I mean? To, to yeah. How it's like, um, like set up. I feel like, what is it? Um, It's like a group effort. It's just that holistic like contribution. And I, yeah, it's actually really interesting. And I think about it, I'm like, wow, yeah. Like it is always like, dinner is always served and ready in movies. I mean, I noticed it, but it wasn't something that I like turned into like a thought piece until now, but that is a really interesting point. Yeah, the reason I, like, started thinking about that is because my sister, she's 20 and, or no, she's 22, sorry, she already graduated college, and she has an apartment now, and she loves hosting parties with all of her friends, and she hosted a party a couple days ago, and she texted me the other day, and she's like, I can't believe that I'm doing all of this, and I'm like, what, and she's like, oh, when um, mom would host parties, all of her friends would come and help. But now that I barely know anyone, because she moved like three or four hours away when she got her apartment. So all of her friends are pretty new. She's like, I don't feel comfortable asking them to come like an extra three hours just so I can make dinner for all of us together. But now I'm doing the whole thing and it's just not as fun anymore to host. 
No, I agree. I mean, when I think about it, yeah, I feel like the cooking together aspect, it's just like, it's it's just a, kind of like a bonding thing. I think like some people, they don't like it together, but I feel like for our cultures, like it's it's nice because you have that companionship and it's fun. It just makes the process more, and I guess for lack of better words, digestible in a way. And not even just digestible, it doesn't even just make it palatable. It just makes it fun in general, like your sister was saying. And it's like, no, I completely agree. I completely agree with her because like when I think there have been a few times where I've had to like cook by myself and prepare everything on my own. And it's kind of like sad because you're just like, dang, like I'm really doing this alone. Yeah. And I, don't know. I think as it's someone who, oh, sorry. Oh, no, go ahead. As someone who like absolutely cannot bake, cannot cook, can't, I should not be trusted around anything like remotely warm. Um, I Every time I like make something and I mess up, with other people it's like that's really fun like just trying something but when I'm alone and I mess something up it's just like darn now I just have to clean this up and go about my day yeah no that kind of reminds me of like um what is it oh my god this is like the most random freaking example ever this is so embarrassing it's like I tried making slime a few years ago and I did it by myself and I made like a huge mess and I was like wow like this would be so much more fun if I had other people like doing this with me. But like now I'm literally just cleaning this huge freaking mess of borax and glue by myself. And it's just kind of like sad. And like, I don't know, that's just what it kind of reminds me of. It's like when you mess up, it, like it just feels so much more like grave. You're like, dang, like I made a mistake. But when you're with other people, it's like, oh, whatever. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's kind of like easier to kind of like, I don't know. Yeah, it feels less important when there's other people around. Because you can just be like, oh, anyway, because yeah, no. it's not like the thing that you're thinking about you have other people to like distract you and make you feel better you know what that reminds me of I saw this statistic years 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 ago I think I was like I was literally a child I was like 10 years old but um I remember it said that most people prefer uh physical pain to emotional pain and I was like thinking about that that like I think I like read something like I remember reading something like sort of recently where it was saying, I like remember the most random things, but I never remember where I read, from. but I remember like hearing or reading that um, people when they like, what is it, are physically hurt, they tend to, what is it, feel better. They tend to recover, not faster, but the recovery process feels easier when they have a support system as opposed to people who don't. And I think that's really interesting, just kind of having that emotional connection to other people, even when you're doing things that are quote unquote mundane or monotonous it just feels better they don't feel as mundane they feel more exciting in a way and even then you kind of overlook the whole like monotony of any regular like regular everyday process because you're with other people and it just it's it's fun well yeah it's not monotonous anymore because now you've made it an activity yourself like you've made it unmonotonous like when I go like to the like going to the mall going shopping that's very commonly like something you do with friends something that's supposed to be fun but when you do it alone you're just kind of walking around and you're looking at things and everything's like a little bit sadder when you're doing it alone because when you're doing it with a lot of people you have all those opinions and all those like thoughts to share but it's so you're so focused on being alone when you're alone I think like having that sense of community is really important of course, alone time is important. Of course, of course, it's important to spend time with yourself. But I feel like just having that emotional connection and sense of community is like really important. But on the flip side, this is a total segue. One thing I also want to talk about as well is kind of like the Black Friday culture and how big it used to be. I've always thought that was really interesting. I feel like that's like a situation where like large groups of people aren't always the most beneficial as opposed to the holidays. But yeah, I thought Black Friday was really interesting to bring up just because you kind of see just such a strong dichotomy between Thanksgiving, like, you know, being super cutesy and like fun and just relaxing and being with your family. And then the next, literally the next day, not even the fully next day, some people used to get up at four or five in the morning and just go ham at freaking Best Buy. And I think it's really interesting to kind of see that like total shift. Yeah. Yeah. It's so, like odd. I genuinely when I was like I didn't realize that Black Friday was an actual thing until I was like 12 like embarrassingly late because it just felt it just felt so fake the the day after Thanksgiving when you're supposed to be so grateful it's like everything's on sale you can get whatever you want now and people are so focused on getting what they want and it's just like 
then what did what were you grateful for yesterday what happened to that <laughs> no I know and then you'll see the craziest Black Friday videos I mean it's not as big of a thing anymore but I think that's just kind of the result of a post-COVID world um I didn't really get to go Black Friday shopping as a kid too much I think maybe I went one time when I was nine and then I went again like within the past like two years I forgot whether it was this past year or the year before that but um yeah, I mean, it's, I mean, the malls still get pretty packed, but I feel like deals aren't as good as they used to be. But back in the day, like when I was like a kid and stuff, I remember like hearing about Black Friday deals all the time. I feel like now the focus is mostly on Cyber Monday. But back in the day, I remember just like seeing like compilation videos of people getting into crazy fights like on Black Friday. And I was just like, y'all are actually like doing this? Like, <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. I just, I know what you're talking about. I see those all the time. And I'm like, there's no way that's real over like some groceries. Are you sure? Why? Yeah. Or sometimes it'll be over toys too. I actually saw this TikTok the other day and it was this grown lady literally fighting with this little girl over a toy that was on sale. And it was like limited editions or something. And of course the freaking grown lady won. But like, I remember the child was crying afterwards and the reporter was like, a grown woman like fighting with a child and the child just like crying like holding her face and the woman was like literally changed she's like I got the doll like and it was just such a crazy thing to see because it's so weird that people will act like that legitimately the day after they're supposed to be the most grateful they have in the whole year yeah it's so interesting because it's like over and especially like what you were talking about the deals are not even that good anymore like I'll see things and it's like oh 25 percent off that's a regular deal and I think that's just because of like inflation and people wanting to like or companies wanting to like keep their money but I don't know it's just crazy to see someone go absolutely insane over $15 no yeah I completely agree one thing that I do find interesting though just yeah I agree with I feel like because of inflation the deals just aren't as good anymore but I think that's in a way it's sort of good not too much but a little bit just because we do see less of those black friday fights they're not as crazy anymore but i feel like that's really the only probably like the only positive that we're ever going to see from inflation and the lack of discount honestly like that will probably be the singular isolated benefit to that honestly yeah there's like we're we're never gonna get like a 70 percent off deal anymore but like at least nobody is dying in like a jc penny <laughs> are jc pennies even still open i swear they like closed down or something i don't know i keep seeing ads that are like oh our best or our black friday lasts three weeks what and that also i keep seeing like a lot of companies are trying to like keep their small discounts like oh on black friday everything's 25 percent off but it's not just black friday it's friday saturday sunday monday tuesday and it's like, okay, you can do that, I, I guess. I yeah. think it's more like marketing, though. I think so, too. Just because I feel like the whole, like, thing of Black Friday is that it's it's one singular day. So I find it interesting mm-hmm. that the, now they're kind of expanding through, like, the whole weekend, too. Because I feel like before, because I remember, like, before COVID, like, I remember being a sophomore in high school and it being solely just Black Friday and Cyber Monday. Like, it was just those two days. Like, you went to the store Black Friday and then on cyber monday like you shopped online but i feel like after that i feel like it's honestly such a crazy like thing to see so much change in like such a short period of time especially for like my peers because we're only like we're literally only like like we're literally only like 19 20 21 but then like i feel like so much has changed like since the time we were in high school which of course like things do just because the transition from like high school to college is like a big one But even then, just culturally as well, like there's been such a monumental change. I feel like that's kind of, I guess for lack of a better word, sort of unprecedented. I don't want to say that because I don't feel like that's entirely accurate. I feel like there may have been generations. There definitely have been generations in the past where they've gone through major world events that have changed them and their generation in a short period of time. But my point is that like, it's crazy to see that like how much like we've changed like socially in such a short period of time because I'll talk about it sometimes I think we brought it up in one of my classes like last week we were talking about how like how so much has changed 
since like COVID. And I feel like COVID is something that I kind of bring out, bring up a lot on the podcast, but it has had very, it has a, a widespread effect and not even just in terms of the way that we approach health, but literally in every aspect of our lives. Cause I remember you're talking about trick or treating. Um, and I remember that like, we were saying like, oh, like the kids nowadays. And I remember this one girl, she was like, oh my God, it's so weird to have the kids nowadays conversation when I just stopped being a teenager last year. Like, it's such a weird thing to like, what does it say? Just because we were talking about how like we would trick or treat when we were kids, but now it's like the whole like deal is like trunk or treat. And then I remember like seeing on like TikTok that a lot of like houses were saying like, take a handful like of candy just because people like kids aren't trick or treating like that anymore. Whereas like when I was a kid, it was like, take one or two. Like it was really just like take yeah. one or two. Now it's like take a whole freaking handful just so you can get rid of the candy. And it's like, it's just weird to see like the change in the way that we like approach other people. And I think we're kind of like increasingly becoming more isolated which is kind of sad but I think that's kind of expected with the rise of like AI and everything and it's like something that I'm not super shocked to see in a post-COVID world especially when it comes to like the holiday season and all of that and it makes me wonder how like I mean like I know how like I know how like Christmas shopping has changed I feel like Christmas is one of those things where like you'll all it'll always sort of be the same I mean I can't think of any major like changes but I feel like in terms of the way that we approach stuff like Black Friday, because that relates largely to like the economy. And we've seen a lot of inflation since COVID. I feel like that's something that we, of course, like we, we expect to, and then also actually like observe a drastic change in, but yeah, that was a whole long spiel. Sorry. (laughs) No, you're good. You're good. Yeah, you're right. There's like, there's some things that just don't change, but a lot of things do. And especially with trick-or-treating, um, I would, I actually went with one of my friends and her baby brother so that we didn't look at weird looks. (laughs) <laughs> um but but we went and he had like three full bags because multiple people we we went pretty late we went at like nine or ten and multiple people just grabbed his bag and just dumped the whole thing in it they were like I want to go inside nobody's coming in and just take the whole thing um and it was so sad like seeing all these adults dejected and my sister um she just got her new apartment and she spent like half of her grocery budget on getting candy and decoration and she was so sad because not a single person came no yeah and it's just like really sad to see because I'm just like I mean me personally like Halloween is my favorite holiday so I'm just like to see not as much excitement around it like when I did when I was a kid it's just so sad because I remember like I'm sure you remember like a couple years ago like Halloween was just so different it feels like it was so much more festive than it is now and I feel like now it's not the same and then uh, there's something else I was going to bring up, but I'm kind of blanking on it. But um, okay. yeah, it's just really sad to see. Yeah, because also we went to this like very popular neighborhood in my uh, in Cary that's just known for being like insane with their Halloween decorations. And even then, there was like not that many people who were willing to do it. And the people who did, they did go out all out like they did last year. And they still, they always run out of candy and they didn't. And they were so sad every time they were like, oh, I spent four days on this and five people came. Cause, yeah. And honestly, like I understand trunk or treating. I understand that it's safer and it's like probably easier on the parents. But I just think like I'm biased. I love trick or treating and that's just what I grew up on. And seeing that like I'm a sophomore, that was probably my last year trick or treating. I really want to be like outside giving out candy. And if trunk or treating just keeps getting bigger, I don't think I'll be able to do that as an adult. Mm -hmm. And it's just like upsetting because that's what I've wanted to do. That's what I grew up seeing. And yeah. No, I agree. Like, I'm the same way. Like, I, I've i always wanted, like, Halloween to, like, remain this, like, big, big thing. And I, I, I'm i the same way. I feel like I'm a little bit biased because I'm that's the way that I grew up. But it's just kind of sad to see that, like, kids, like, oh, my God, I believe I say kids nowadays. But, yeah, like, kids nowadays don't get that same experience. And, of course, I understand that it is easier. But I don't know. I think there's this thing called, like, creating special moments for your kids where it's, like, you kind of, like, create, like, magical moments just to kind of, like, give them that, like, idyllic childhood in a way, and I feel like it's kind of important to, like, 
go the extra mile or like facilitate that. You know what I mean? Like, of course, like trunk or treating is easier, but I feel like it's nice to see just like kids have that like experience of being able to like run around the neighborhood and just like have fun and yeah. you know, be, and then but I don't know I guess times are changing and yeah it, it's sad to see though but one thing I was gonna like mention I remember what I was gonna say earlier is that you said that you were trick-or-treating at like 9 or 10 p.m right like, mm-hmm. I remember the last time I trick-or-treated I was actually like your same age like the last time I trick-or-treated I was a sophomore in high school too mm-hmm. and I remember like by 9 or 10 p.m like the streets were like nobody was out like literally like nobody was out like trick-or-treating like I swear it was like from like five to like eight the latest oh yeah that's the thing all the little kids um the ones who did go they went at around like 4 35 it was still bright out and it's like that's no fun I mean yeah. I know that it's safer like I understand that it's safer and it's better for the little kids but like that's not as magical. They're not going to look back and they're going to be like, I remember trick-or-treating in broad daylight. (laughs) Or like, I remember going from one trunk to another in a parking lot. Like, that's not a memory that you can look back on and like, just fully be like, that was so much fun. Oh, yeah. My point is that like, I was going to say like, back then like it was a little bit earlier but that's how you know nobody's retreating because the fact that you're out like 9 or 10 p.m and people still had like their lights on and we're still handing out candy like that's how you know people aren't really coming anymore because I remember like when I would trigger like I mean I only went trigger training twice as a child sadly but I loved it but I remember um like once it hit like 8 p.m like people were like turning their lights off and going back inside like it was not like how it is like now where like people will literally be sitting by the door for hours and then still have most of their candy by the end of the night unless they like tell people to like take handfuls or whole bags Mm -hmm. yeah no it's just sad to see and it's just kind of like it really is just like the post-covid world which is so sad and I think like just I think the isolation and just like the staying at home or staying like what is it in one place and just growing sedentary it's just gonna continue to increase and I largely think it is because of like um like it's just like an abundance of things it really just kind of like is like the whole post-covid thing it's just the fact that things are getting more expensive and then also i think the rise of ai like there's just so many things that are kind of keeping us from like expanding beyond home base which is yeah. really really sad but because it really used to not be like this because i remember being in elementary school and i was like everybody's so social and now i'm like in college and i'm like nobody is out like <laughs> yeah it's so like disappointing especially with like all the chat bots like chat gpt snapchat ai meta instagram um like character ai they're all made to talk to you like a human being and it's weird because like there's so there's seven billion of us or there's eight billion why do you need a robot and a lot of us are like so accustomed to just using chat gpt or snapchat ai to just like do our work or do whatever and it's so much easier to just talk to a random chatbot than it is a person now. And it's so easy to avoid talking to people as well. Like with Zoom and with like every messaging software there is, it's so easy to avoid in the way that it wasn't like just a couple years ago. I know. And I think it's a really interesting point that you bring up the whole like everybody using like chat gpt because that's so true like i didn't know how big of a problem it was until like recently just because i don't use chat gpt like i just don't really like feel comfortable using that but like i like i never realized how big of a problem it is and just also like because of how like prevalent it is now a lot of professors use the ai software to determine whether or not like ai has been used it used to be like the plagiarism websites I mean, it's kind of the same thing, actually, now that I think about it, I'm pretty sure. I don't think there's, like, a huge difference between them. But what sucks is that now, like, even if you, like, did not, like, plagiarize your paper or use, like, anything, like, crazy, it will still flag you as, like, having some sort of plagiarism. Or, like, it will, like, sometimes it'll look flag you for, like, a high amount, which is, like, really sad. Because sometimes it'll be citations or sometimes it'll be, like, something that, like, an idea that you bring up. And it's one of those things where it's, like, kind of, like some people get like in trouble even when they haven't plagiarized like when they have not when they sincerely have not plagiarized which is really sad and it's really just because the tool I feel like it just has such a hard time narrowing down like what's like what's original versus what's not just because the internet is so broad and there's so much information that it's kind of hard to like 
truly have like an original, original like thought piece. It almost feels like everything has already been like said or done. You know what I'm saying? So I feel like that's all these like AI checkers, they come up with like some percentage of like plagiarism. It's, it's just because like either because of citations or because like, what is it? It's like a general concept that's being discussed that like, what is it? Has been discussed time and time again elsewhere on the internet. So yeah, yeah, and sometimes kids get like in trouble for that. Like I've like seen, like I always bring up TikTok, but like, it's true. Mm -hmm. Like I've seen like videos on TikTok where people will be like, oh, I have to go and like defend myself. What is it? Um, Like at my university, because like I got checked for plagiarism, but I didn't plagiarize. And I don't know how to prove I didn't because like, I legitimately just didn't. Like there's, what can I do? Yeah, so, and it, oh, sorry. Oh no, um, that's, it's interesting because like these AI checkers, checkers, they're just as new as the AI. Like maybe a little older, but they both have the same technology. And now, instead of just trying to like flag things that have already existed, they're trying to flag things that haven't existed yet. They're trying to flag AI that somebody is at, like. They're trying to flag the AI that isn't on the internet. It's on someone's like Snapchat being like, can you write me a paper? And this, the teachers or like educators, they just put so much emphasis and they rely so much on this technology that is so new and it doesn't really know what it's doing. It can't fully say like this was or wasn't made by AI because it doesn't know that. It, it There's no way for it to know that like somebody used Snapchat AI to write something or if they just happen to use all of that vocabulary. And even if it's something that's, another thing that's really common is um, people use Snapchat or Snapchat or ChatGPT AI to read things, like they summarize it. And um, those like chatbots, they use the same couple words or the same phrases very commonly. And that's like how you check them for AI. But as people summarize things and read things and get their information from ChatGPT, they also gain that vocabulary and they just start to sound more like the AI unintentionally. And that's also a reason that a lot of people get flagged just for phrases. No, that is really true, actually. I have noticed that. And it's it also sucks just because there are a lot of writing tools as well that like will recommend you write in a specific way or that sounds more grammatically correct. But like, of course, it's kind of like AI tools like Grammarly. So it's like you do end up kind of sounding, I guess, in a way robotic. And that is like also like an issue as well. But um, I think now, like even tools like Grammarly, like if you use them, like they still flag you for um, what is it like plagiarism? Like if you use like their AI tool to like rewrite like a sentence, if they're like, oh, like you should write it this way instead as opposed to this way or like, what is it? This is grammatically incorrect. Like it will still flag it, which is like a really interesting thing just because it's kind of one of those things where it's like, I feel like it's hard to establish a boundary between what is permitted and then what isn't because sometimes you don't go into it with the intention of plagiarizing. It's more so you're using uh, what you like, what you feel is an academic tool or something that kind of scaffold you into like, what is it being more like having proper academic writing and you think, that you're doing the right thing but it's actually like not okay or not per- like what is it um permissible so I think it's really interesting to kind of like see where we draw the lines but I think the whole issue with AI is that we don't really know where to draw the line and I think um not even just with academics but I think as a whole like the ethical implications of AI and just where we draw these boundaries it's it's kind of hard to find that line I think it's just moving too fast for us to kind of keep up with and I think a lot of people can use it for bad. Like I've seen a lot of like, um, what is it? Like, like, like sometimes like, what is it? People will make like deep fakes and stuff like that. And it'll just like, look like you're saying something that you're not. And it's just kind of like this whole thing. Like, do you know what I'm talking about? Where like, they yeah. can- so it's, it's in like- the news a lot recently about like kids, um, like getting accused of doing like crimes and stuff because of Sora AI, which- is like a program that does really hyper-realistic videos and it's super good at it. And it's just like given to the public. And that makes sense. I don't want people to take things from the public, but there's a line that we need to draw that's just like, make this person do this on just like typing it into a text box and just getting a video. 
like there has to be some sort of line. And also back to the Grammarly thing, that's true with like the way it will reformat your sentences. And outside of academics, a lot of like writers, they have their own writing style. And I think that's just kind of crushing that because nowadays when you read something, it all sounds the same. It all sounds like something ChatGPT made. And even when people aren't using ChatGPT, it's just AI is so forced into our lives that you develop some vocabulary in the way you talk just a little bit. Oh, yeah. And it's, it's disappointing how like unvaried it is now. Yeah, I think I saw this one quote a while ago and it was saying how AI is doing our art and our writing, but it would be nice if it did like our mundane tasks or like our monotonous tasks. So that way, like people can actually like do the things that they truly want, like art and like writing and things like that. Like, cause I remember like reading something that like people naturally, or like a lot of the time gravitate towards like, ex- like, what is it? Catharsis or like expressive things like art and writing. And it's, it's sad that what is it? AI in a way sort of taking that away from us. And then, like, we're kind of left to do, like, the mundane, like, tasks, whereas, like, it would be nice if, like, yeah, I could do that, and then we could actually do the things that we, like, truly want. And I was like, I think that's really interesting as well, just because of those things where it's, like, yeah, like, AI is doing a lot of the things that, like, people would like to do, just because I don't really, like, hear about people, like, writing or, like, drawing as much anymore. Maybe I'm just not surrounded by the right crowd, or that could be it, but, like, it's just kind of sad to see how, like, AI can kind of take the place of like an artist because I feel like you it I just feel like it it can't replicate that like human touch do you know what I mean like yeah and like those it's disappointing trying to get like jobs now too because no matter what you want to be you need to have some involvement in tech you can't just not like technology like Artists need to know how to make sure that their art isn't like used for AI training. Writers need to know how to like make sure their writing isn't used for AI training or doesn't sound like AI or isn't flagged for plagiarism. And it's just no matter what job you choose, AI will be incorporated into that. And if you don't want to work with AI, you're there's nothing you can do about it. Yeah, no, that is really true. Like, there really is no option to not use technology. Like, you could legitimately, no matter what you do, you just can't escape it. It's just so heavily integrated into our lives. And it's getting to a point where, like, um, I remember, like, a couple of years ago, it was just kind of, like, it was just kind of easy to, like, turn off your phone or, like, you know, like, turn off your laptop. But now it's just, like, social media and just the internet as a whole. It's kind of, like, it's, like, a, just a different aspect of our reality. Like, you can't, like, be, like, oh, like, you can't just, like, turn off your computer and then just, like, only be, like, in the physical, like, three-dimensional world. It's, like, the internet itself has become, like, a part of our reality, whether we realize it or not. Like, sometimes I think about it, I'm just, like, the amount of time that we spend on this literal block, like, this literal (laughs) block is so crazy. Like, yeah, I mean, like, I've always thought about it that way, but sometimes I'll be doing my homework and I'll be typing and I'll look at the time and I'm, like, oh my God, I've been sitting here for four hours like doing this. I've literally just been staring at a block, like literally a mm-hmm. block. And it's so, it's just like, a, it's just so crazy to think about it through that vantage point. Yeah, it's so like interesting because I, I know like a couple years back, I'd be able to just turn off my notifications and go on a walk. But now I can't because I have my school that will send me notifications if I've if something happens, my swim team who will send me like messages if something's changed. And even the people that like are in my actual real life, I can't ignore. And I, if I were to give up like this little block that I'm using, I'd basically cut off the real life connections that I have. No, yeah, I completely agree. Um, what is it? What was I gonna say? Oh, for the sake of time, we should probably move on to our media segment, actually. Sorry to cut off. Okay. But um, what was I gonna say? Do you wanna start? Like, do you wanna talk about like any like music or songs or movies that you've been watching recently? Um, honestly, I don't really watch too much of anything. I watched Mean Girls yesterday, 
<laughs> and with Renee Rapp or the original one with Regina? Um, oh, the original one. Um, was it your first time watching it? Uh, no, it was my second. I actually only watched like half of it, and then right before like she starts, like the main character, what's her name? I don't know. The blonde one. Oh. Or Katie? Kitty, Kitty. Before she does like that really embarrassing, like, oh, like she gets caught with her party. Like that gave me so much that contained embarrassment. I just turned it off. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, no, it's such an entertaining movie. But yeah, I remember watching it and like getting so much like a hand embarrassment. I was like, there's actually no freaking way right now. Like this is Yeah, not- like it's so painful to watch, genuinely, because it's like, what are you doing? Please. Oh. You know what else gives me a lot of secondhand embarrassment? I don't know whether you've seen like Ginny and Georgia. Like I get oh, so yes. Yeah, oh, I get gosh. so much secondhand embarrassment from that show. Cause I remember when it first came out, like I was the same age as like Ginny. Cause I think it came out when it came out like um when I was 16 and like I remember she was 16 in the show as well. So like I remember getting so much secondhand embarrassment because I was like, I would never act like this. I was like, this is actually crazy. Like there's just no freaking way. Yeah, because like me and my friend, we tried to watch it. And we could, like, predict what she'd do. And we were younger than her. And we were, like, we still know that that's a terrible idea. Please, like, lock in. What are you doing? (laughs) (laughs) Like, it's just so odd. Like, all of the choices that she makes are just so odd. Um, I'm trying to think what I've been watching. I mentioned this a little bit earlier, but I've been watching a lot of, like, Better Call Saul. I love that show so much. I love Breaking Bad. Like, I know everyone loves Breaking Bad, but, like, (laughs) I love Breaking Bad. Like, I will say it time and time again. I love Breaking Bad. Yeah, I've been watching that. I think that's super interesting. In terms of music, I've been listening to a lot of, like, Doobie Doobie lately. And then I've, listening, I've been listening to a lot of Conan Gray. And I know last time we did our media segment, I also said I was listening to Conan Gray. But I'm still listening to him. But, um, like, he's going to be in my Spotify rap this year. Like, I already know it. But, um, yeah, like, what have you been listening to lately? Like, any specific songs that you've had on repeat or anything like that? Um, so. I like to find like artists in which I can, I love rap, but I hate when they slur their um, like words because I like to know the lyrics. And if I can't follow along with the lyrics, it's a bad song. Like I just can't do songs in which I don't know what they're talking about. Um, So I like to find songs like from musicals that are fast, but you can understand what they're saying really clearly. Um, And so I like Hamilton songs, but also some of the new like, popular rap I can actually understand what they're saying and it's really nice like um like not like us Fiend they're both so popular but I can actually hear the words and I just think that's like fun because like it's popular but I know what's going on and I can actually listen to it enjoyably without just hearing random babbling yeah I feel like mumble rap is kind of dying out we kind of went through like a weird phase with that for some reason but like I feel like it's sort of starting to like die out a little bit but have you listened to Tyler Creator's new album like I Tyler Creator oh I've heard of him but I don't really listen to I've listened to like the really popular songs but I don't listen to full albums a lot I have been like a huge fan of him since I was like nine like since I was a literal freaking child mm-hmm. but um yeah like I think he came out with a new album recently I haven't listened to it in its entirety but like, I listened to like a handful of songs and they're pretty good I just brought it up because like the whole like rap topic but yeah like I feel like mumble rap as a whole is just like kind of sort of dying out like it's not really something that like that I've really like heard too much of recently I feel like it was such a big thing during like that 2017 to like sort of 2021 era I feel Mm -hmm. yeah it's just like all songs in which they're just like slurring their words that was really popular like a couple years back but we've gone out of it we've matured thankfully Mm -hmm. um yeah uh I I know some of my friends they love Tyler the Creator they read like they listened to the whole album as soon as it came out and apparently it gave them whiplash in like a positive way in like a good way a good way but like the songs are super different from each other which I like in albums because if you listen to a full album a lot of the times it'll just like blur together but he doesn't do that yeah no I've always loved Tyler and I feel like he's grown a lot artistically um yeah like so much of his new stuff I feel like Igor and then this project as well Chromatopia I feel like it's just like you've seen just so much dimension in it and it's just really nice to see like how he's like moving in like different like artistic correct directions I also really loved like call me if you get lost I loved it so freaking much especially because I'm like such a big um 
fan of like uh like the boat i think he's sort of like loosely like based it maybe i'm wrong but i swear like at least like the vibe reminded me of uh what is it i don't know whether you've seen like that whether you've read the book series or like seen the show why is it called like um oh my gosh i like forget what it's called but it's like it has like violet baudelaire and like like what is it um i like forget the freaking name but anyways the vibe of that album was just so amazing it just like the visuals were so good like it was just like I just loved it and I remember like that was like the era where like everybody was sort of trying to like dress like Tyler and they were wearing like their Dickies and like Doc Martens like everybody was wearing Oxfords and I was like I was literally one of those people like I was literally all I wore like my senior year of high school but I loved it so much I feel like all of his eras are just really cool and it's just kind of like cool to see how he kind of takes on like a different persona or like he has like different faces and like facades like throughout each album and I know a lot of artists like kind of do that nowadays but I feel like for him it's like each era is very distinct and I really like that mm-hmm. I'll have to check that out that looks really that sounds really interesting yeah no I loved it and then what else have I been what else have I been listening to lately um yeah, honestly, I'm not gonna lie, I've been listening to a lot of pop recently. I've been listening to a lot of like Olivia Rodrigo and like Sabrina Carpenter. Sabrina's been on the come up for like a couple like months now, I feel. She's gotten like really, really big recently, but some of her songs are pretty good. They're pretty fun. So it's just yeah. like yeah, it's just cool to listen to. Mm-hmm. I've also been listening to a lot of pop because one of my cousins, they've been trying to get like concert tickets um for us so sometimes she'll just send me like full albums and she's like listen to this and if you like it we'll get tickets and we'll go because she loves like so many artists but she doesn't want to go to a concert alone so she just keeps sending me things oh my gosh I don't even blame her I've had my friends do that well they'll be like Emily like I want to go to this concert but like here listen to like the artists and stuff and I think it's really interesting because yeah I feel like going to concerts alone like it can just be kind of awkward sometimes especially because it's like it's so crowded and also I feel like it's a safety concern as well just going to concerts alone yeah and also just like it's so like it you don't really have anyone to share the excitement with so you're just kind of standing there listening to music I mean I've never been to a concert so like I can't really say how that is but I feel like it wouldn't be as fun alone because it's just listening to music I think I've been to, I swear I've been to three concerts, but for some reason I can only remember two of them right now. I think the first concert I ever went to was when I was in seventh grade. I went to go see the 1975. Um, and then I went to go see Chase Atlantic, my senior year of high school. But I swear I went to another concert. Like, what am I thinking of? Like, oh my God, I'm so mad that I'm blanking. I almost went to go see <laughs> Tyler twice. I, went, I almost went to see him my freshman year of high school, but I wasn't allowed to go. And this was like back then where he was still kind of on the come up. So I think the tickets were only like 20 bucks. Why were you allowed to go? Oh, because I like my parents didn't let me go. Oh. 14. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But um, I was gonna go see him my senior year of high school. And I remember the tickets then, they were like a couple hundred dollars, which is kind of crazy to kind of like be a fan of an artist and like watch them grow because it's like you'll try to go see them and like when you first like start liking them when they're not as big, like it's like it's like easier just because the tickets are more affordable. But then like as they get bigger, like watching how like the price like literally multiplies is so crazy because I remember yeah. also wanting to go to flog now when I was like in eighth grade like it's this festival that Tyler the creator does but um I'm, I haven't seen like the prices for those but it's like a festival that he holds like over the weekend like in LA and stuff but I've always been meaning to go on that I feel like it's kind of like on my life bucket list and I sort of like should do that at some point I don't know why like I, I kind of forgot about that but I feel like it'd be like a really fun thing to do but yeah, I think it's just really cool how, like, people can get really into, like, an artist and, like, follow their journey since, like, the beginning. Yeah, yeah. like, my friend, um, she's been obsessed with, like, Sabrina Carpenter for years, and um, she was just, like, putting off her um, concerts. She just, like, oh, didn't feel like it, didn't want to go, and now every time she uploads, like, a new song and she gets more famous, she's like, ah, oh, I should have gone. I didn't realize she was just gonna, like, completely skyrocket in the next year no yeah and it's just so crazy because it's like just seeing how like different it is like and just like finding an artist that is sort of niche to you or to a specific subset of people and then watching them like become a household name is just so crazy because it's one of those things where you're just like oh wow 
And it's also just kind of cool to watch somebody's like career development in that way, especially in that field. Just because like when you like get like really big like that, it's like, I don't know how to explain it. It's just like so weird. I've never like, it's like, I mean, I've always like observed it, but I just can't imagine being that person and then just like playing small venues or like at restaurants or something and then like selling out stadiums. Like I can't imagine how like exciting and then also overwhelming that is. I've always wondered what that's like behind the scenes. Yeah, like I have something kind of like that, like very minimally. Um, my kata group, uh, it's called Akriti Dance Academy. Recommend it. She's really nice. I love her. But when we first started out, we were like, we weren't one of the first groups, but we were definitely like, this was like seven, eight years ago. She like, she had not been here for very long. And our performances were pretty small. Like they were big for a dance performance, but that was considering that there was like 20 people on the stage because there's 20 people in my class. And so there would be like 60 people in the stadium. And that was cool and all. But this year, actually, we held the NC, uh, like NC State Kathak Festival. And that's now the largest national Kathak festival in America in history. And it's like so crazy to see like that's where we came from. Like eight years ago, we were like performing in the same stage and less than half of the auditorium was filled. And now we can claim like honestly, people from India, people from New York, people from all over the world have come to like perform in our event. That's really freaking cool. Holy cow. Wow. Yeah. Like, I can't even imagine what that feels like. And I don't think that's like a minimal thing. That's a huge deal. Like, that's really, really cool. Yeah, it was like, it's such like a different experience to like go back to that stadium and just be like, wow, this is huge. Like, this is world recognized. That's amazing. Well, that is amazing. Um. What was I going to say? Yeah, like, I can't imagine, like, I don't know. Like, I feel like it's one of those things where it's, like, you have to feel, like, proud. Like, I can't imagine, like, feeling anything but that. Like, that's actually, like, amazing. But, um, oh, my goodness. I was going to say more, but then I realized that we are short on time, unfortunately. <laughs> oh. Um, yeah, do you have any, like, final thoughts or anything like that? Or um, any final comments? Um, no, I think I'm fine, actually. Thanks for having me. This was really fun. And also, I just want to say, like, congratulations literally for, like, everything. Like, that's really amazing. Like, I'm still on that. And I'm just like, dang, like, I don't even know what to say. Like, that's such a cool, like, thing. And I can't imagine, like, what that experience is like, especially just, like, I don't know, like, performing for, like, a small group. And, of course, it isn't just about the numbers, but it's also just kind of, like, having the attention of many people and just, like, having their, like, interests. I just, I can't Yeah. Imagine. It's interesting to see my, like, teacher grow because now she's, like, directing all of these giant projects she's like trying to get us into the parade that we do in Carrie um and it's just so different than what it was a couple of years back in which we can barely get a theater and now we just have so much going on yeah that's really cool I'm really proud of you that's actually amazing thank you oh well, I think that pretty much wraps up our episode for today. I will definitely be asking Umbi more about that because that sounds so cool. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, I hope all of you enjoyed this episode and we will see you next time. We really hope that you have a great holiday no matter what you are celebrating and we will see you very soon. tuned to the Nissan Communications Network. If you tuned in too late, you can always watch each program in its entirety or download an MP3 audio file of it in the archives section at nissancommunications.com. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, follow us on Twitter, and like us on Facebook. Sponsored by StreamingGear.com and DeltaForce.net.